Today I wanted to address some confusion surrounding the tap point settings on the Behringer XR18 and the Midas MR18, specifically in relation to setting up monitors. Let's break down the key points for clarity. First off, I'll divide the discussion into two main sections, inputs and outputs. And then I'll try and put a bow on things with a summary section at the end. Starting with the inputs. On Xair Edit, you can access the selected channel sends by simply clicking on a channel and then navigating to the sends option. In Mixing Station, you'll find a similar process, albeit with a different interface. Here you'll notice there are six channel sends and four effects sends, each with tap points accessible through a drop down menu. I'll switch back to Xair Edit here. To understand these tap points better, think of these all as variations of a pre fader setup, meaning they are tapped at different points in the signal chain before the channel fader. This distinction is crucial when setting up a channel send for a monitor feed. Usually, for monitors from front of house, you'll want a pre-fader send to ensure that the front of house fader adjustments do not affect the monitors. But not only pre-fader, but which pre-fader tap point is the best pre-fader tap point to choose for a given circumstance. I'll talk more about that in the summary section of this video. These would all be variations of post-fader below this point. Let's take a visual look at this concept. Imagine the signal chain with input gain, EQ, and the channel fader all in line. A post fader tap would be after the channel fader. Any changes on that channel fader will also affect that post fader channel send. A pre fader tap would be at some point before the channel fader. Therefore, the channel fader is no longer a factor in that pre-fade channel send. It still will capture these other things though. But for example, if we tap it pre-EQ, then we no longer capture the EQ in this pre-fader send. Depending on where the tap is made, this will dictate what things are affecting that channel send. This chart shows what's captured in each of those tap points. I'll explain more about this in the final section of this video. I think most people have a basic grasp of what we're talking about here, but this next section is where the confusion really starts to set in. So let's talk about the output routing. Here's where things can get a bit murky. The terminology remains the same but it refers to an entirely different part of the mixing console compared to the channel sends. Out of the box, the Xair is already configured correctly for monitors from the six outputs. It's crucial to distinguish this from the input section to avoid any unattended changes that might cause confusion. In Xair Edit, you can access the routing window by clicking in out, and then navigate to aux out. The default setting for live situations is typically post fader for the six bus sends. Keep in mind, we're in the output section now. You'll find these same options in mixing station. I feel based on the settings for the input section that people get confused and want to also change these output taps. On mixing station, Click the arrows icon. Choose Output Routing. Where you see Monitor, well ignore that. That is talking about the headphone jack on the front of the console and not your stage monitors. Instead, click Aux Out. You'll see the six outputs on the left. As already discussed, in the Output section, we want these Post Fader almost always, but especially for monitors.
Let's take a look at XR Edit again. We see our six auxiliary XLR outputs on the left. And we see the six bus sends at the top. For almost all live situations, we want these to be post fader. That's the default setting, and that is what you see here. All patched one to one, and you can see by the color code here in the key that they are post fader. Let's take a quick visual look at what's going on in the output section and try and explain what the difference is with the post fader and pre fader option here in the output section. We have our physical outputs here. We're specifying where we want the output faders to be in relation to the physical XLR outputs. Do we want the master monitor output fader to be before the physical output or after the physical output? If we want a fader to control the overall output level of any of these outputs, then we want that XLR output itself post fader. This also means that we have our bus output EQ in line before the XLR output. All right, so let's summarize things. Let's talk about how to choose the proper pre-fader channel send tap point for monitors from front of house. The easy part is we can know we want at least a pre-fader channel send tap point because we don't want our front of house channel faders changing our monitor mix. Any pre-fader channel tap point satisfies that. But do you want your front of house channel EQ settings going to the monitors as well? There are a couple schools of thought on that. One is that any channel EQ change needed for front of house would also be needed in the monitors. The other school of thought is that the monitors are their own animal and without hearing the changes you make, you could easily cause feedback or make a change that the musicians do not like. Pre-EQ is the safer setting for that reason and it leaves more margin for error. If you're someone that is constantly making EQ changes, best practices aside, that would definitely be a situation where pre-EQ is likely the better option. If you do decide you want your front of house channel EQ in the monitors, then you still have two options that will do that. Post EQ or the overall pre-fader setting. As you can see, the pre-fader tap not only adds EQ, but also the compressor. Most singers will not like singing into compression and especially heavy compression in their monitors. Therefore, the decision here is usually pretty simple. Choose post EQ. This setting avoids compression in the monitor but still allows channel EQ. The only real exception to having your channel monitor sends tapped at a point pre-fader would be something like tracks. And in particular, tracks that you have to fade out in the house. If you tap those as post-fader, then the monitors will fade as you fade out the tracks in the house. Now these guidelines are all for when you're doing monitors from front of house. A dedicated monitor console would have different considerations. On the other hand, with monitors from front of house or from a dedicated monitor console, either way, the output settings are the same. You want a master fader for each monitor mix and you want to have the ability to notch feedback with the bus EQ that is on each output. You only get that by setting the monitor outputs to post fader. Since we're focusing on monitors in this video, I only skimmed over the channel effects sends. I already have a deep dive video talking about the effects rack and I'll leave a link for that below. One thing I noticed in the making of this video is that Behringer's own graphic showing the signal flow chart 
is wrong about the position of the high pass filter in relation to one of the tap points. I've made the correction on my signal flow chart and I will upload this to the free tier of the Patreon page so everyone can get a copy of this. These two videos speak to creating a dedicated monitor package with the XR18. And I'll put links below to several other live mixing tutorials. Questions or comments? Leave those below. Likes and subscribes always appreciate it. And I will see you next time.